Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Today, we are going to be talking about the Aegis Redeemer. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members, in particular to my latest channel member, Martin Klitsky. Thank you so much for the support. So with many ships appearing on both the Roadmap View and Progress Tracker, I would like to go through each one in individual videos, taking a closer look at what they are, what they do, and just basically revisiting them, as I'm excited to see these ships come to fruition, and many of which have not been spoken about in a long while. So for new backers, this is a series to introduce you to some of the ships that you may never have heard of, and for those of you who know about these ships, think of it more as a refresher. Today we are talking about a bit of a fan favourite and one that dates way back to 2014. It is the Aegis Redeemer. So the Redeemer is a four person gunship dotted with turrets and missiles equipped with strong shielding and a plethora of weapon systems and can engage a wide range of enemies in patrol, frontline or escort roles, changing from its original design as a dropship. Now the Aegis Redeemer is currently in development, in fact it's very close to being completed with the work coming to a close around the end of September. It can be found on the release view roadmap section as well as it is currently scheduled to release in the next patch which is the quarter 3 alpha 315 patch. We have seen this ship appear a few times this year, once at the latest fleet week, albeit just its exterior but more recently during numerous episodes of Inside Star Citizen. So in the real world, the Aegis Redeemer had quite a unique upbringing. It was the winning ship from the officially sponsored CIG show called The Next Great Starship, which aired weekly in 2014, during which members of the community could enter and design their own spaceship for a chance to win some pretty cool prizes, as well as the final design making it into the verse. Now this was great to watch and I do highly suggest watching it for yourself, However, do bear in mind that it was done way before the ship pipeline process was thoroughly established, which meant that the ship was always going to be in need of a revamp. It was, however, brought into the game during the hangar module days, and it has been left unattended until recently. It was originally pitched as a dropship to play a part in Squadron 42, and we got to see it in action in this role in 2015 for the first demo of the Star Marine module. But with the introduction of the Vanguard Hoplite and then the Valkyrie, it was decided that the Redeemer's role would need to be rethought. This left the Redeemer in limbo for a long while, until it was finally decided that the ship would be a gunship, and in early 2021, the Aegis Redeemer re-entered development. I also believe its redesign was spearheaded by one of the actual community members who designed this ship and were hired after the next great starship, However, I'm not 100% certain about this, or even whether that guy still works at CIG. Anyway, in-game, to reflect the real-life delays surrounding the release of the new Aegis Redeemer, CIG created a little lore to explain why. So it has been said that the Redeemer was introduced as the UEE Navy's next-generation gunship in 2946, but it was played with issues and delays, which I suppose is a brief way of catering for the real-world reasons. So let's talk about its stats. Now even though the ship is already in game, its components and weapons are very much subject to change. So do keep that in mind. And Star Citizen right now is going through a whole series of new ship and weapon balance passes, which begun in Alpha 314 and will continue through the next few patches until it is more where it needs to be. So do expect a lot of changes to many ships, including the Aegis Redeemer. But of course, once the ship does re-release officially, we will take a closer look at its specs. Now as it stands right now, I believe it has one size two radar, two size two computers, one size three power plant, one size three cooler and one size three shield, plus one size two quantum drive and jump drive. We did hear more recently that the components needed to be more beefy, so there is a chance that they could now be bigger, but I do think size three is a likely size. So weaponry wise, as we understand it, it will have two size four weapons mounted on the nose gimbal, two size four weapons mounted on the rear gimbal, two size six manned turrets, one on top and one on bottom, each fitted with two size five weapons. Plus it has two size four integrated missile racks, which I believe hold 16 size two missiles. It also appears to have two more weapons tucked away underneath where the nacelles attach which look like they could be the Bering C-788s. 
So likely two more size fours there. And looking at the most recent video of the Redeemer, we can see that the Noah's Gimbal appears to have a couple of Bayering M series cannons on. They could be size four, but they do look much smaller than the turret weapons, which are supposedly size five. So the M series weapons look like they could be more likely size three. And I'm not entirely certain what the weapons on the turrets are. They are bearing again by the looks of things, but they're certainly not the C7A8s as the turret has repeaters, not cannons. And the likelihood is CIG have again changed up the Redeemer's loadout to be more energy orientated to coincide with the most recent weapon balance changes. But if these specs are anything to go by, it does look like quite a beast. But as mentioned before, do expect many changes when it is released and we will certainly take a look once it's in game. So how does the Redeemer work? What will it do? Who is it intended for? Well, a gunship is a militarized vehicle designed to primarily attack ground targets and provide close air support. Now, when I think of the term gunship, I think of the infamous AC-130, which Star Citizen does have their own equivalent, which is the Hercules A-2, also coming in Alpha 315, and one I'll be sure to include in this series. But the Redeemer seems to be more of a combination of maybe the AC-130 and the Apache attack helicopter, capable of circling a battlefield providing cover, but it also looks pretty capable of providing close air support via strafing runs. Now, without really testing its full range of capabilities, I would say that if the bottom size six man turret can be used to target ground assets, then it will be a pretty useful ship to support ground troops moving through hostile terrain. If a Tonk shows up, for example, would the Redeemer be capable of dealing with it efficiently? I would like to think so, especially with its potential 16 size two missiles. And I do think that having a couple of Aegis Redeemers on hand for any combat focused organization is going to be quite important. It does mention in the most recent description that it can engage a wide range of enemies in patrol, frontline or escort roles. So I do expect CIG will design it to do just that. And written in its in-game lore description, it reads, designed to carry significant cargo and troops, the Redeemer will provide support in a variety of combat situations and logistical operations, as well as it saying that the boarding hatch will permit faster transitions. More on that soon. Now, as we have seen with the recent interior development on Inside Star Citizen, this ship does still have four drop seats, an armory, and two SEU of carrying capacity. So I also think the Redeemer will be a very useful ship for maybe resupplying troops with ammunition or medical supplies, or maybe deploying a small fire team into a hot zone should the need arise. Maybe a useful ship for extracting injured players where it might be too dangerous for an Apollo or a Cutlass Red. Personally, for my organization, I see this ship supporting ground advances, helping to take down vehicular ground or air assets that pose a threat and potentially running escort missions, but also inserting a small unit or resupplying troops in a combat zone. Now, over the last few months, we have been following along with the Aegis Redeemer's development and the interior has come along pretty nicely with the remote turret bays, manned turrets, habitation section, cargo wall bay, armory and four drop seats and the machine section and engineering section too, which is likely where the majority of the components will be found. And there is also what appears to be a docking hatch in this section as well. Inside, it does look very similar to, say, that of the Vanguard, which you would expect being on the same manufacturer and the same style guide. And I do like its more bespoke rooms, especially in the engineering section. Now, the Aegis Redeemer does have some pretty neat features. So let's run through these. First up, we have something called Vector Lock Thrusters. With it saying, this unique thruster design enables an unprecedented amount of mass manipulation by positioning the twin nacelles at optimal locations away from the ship's center of gravity. This encompasses the benefit of increasing the overall stability of the vessel, as well as expanding the combat maneuvers available to the pilot. The nacelle based system utilizes the exposed surface area and draws heat away from vital system parts and directly into the environment, minimizing possible wear and increasing overall engine performance. Couple these advances with the Redeemer's hands-on throttle and innovative flight controls and the result is a gunship that feels and flies like nothing else. So this will be the explanation for the Redeemer's weird looking nutcracker thrusters. It will be quite interesting to see or I suppose feel just how this translates into the game with how it flies and the overall wear and tear system. I also expect its signatures will be pretty high 
as it does say that it draws the heat away from the vital parts but pushes it out into the environment so don't expect it to be a stealthy ship. Now the next feature is its shielding which says to assist the ship's maneuverability the armor is lighter than expected because of this an array of shields were added to help close that deficit. So it sounds like what it lacks in armor it makes up in shields. All I know at the moment is it will have one size three shield of course this is very much subject to change with it saying an array of shields though maybe it will have multiple shield generators. It also has a tactical cockpit stating an intuitive layout allows the pilot complete command over the redeemer and its sophisticated suite of combat capabilities and the final listed feature is economic comfort saying utilizing efficient space management the habitation area aboard the redeemer is practical while still allowing for off-duty hours to be more rewarding. So some other points to consider are that it was originally slated as modular with an interchangeable room module. Now I think it's still highly likely that this will be the case and if so I do wonder if this fan favorite variant that we have been hearing about could be a new redeemer variant or a module to come with its release and be available at the Cousin Crow's custom craft shop that will be found in Orison from 315 onwards. Now I personally think it's a pretty high possibility to create a variant to be used alongside the first implementation of Cousin Crows and with the upcoming medical and healing mechanics personally a heavily armed medivac would be an incredible option especially as the Cutlass Red and the Apollo are not very well armed for taking on heavy contacts but I will say this loud and clear I do not know what the fan favorite variant will be nor have CIG ever stated the potential of a medivac redeemer. So this is pure speculation on my part. But with that said, do let me know what you think and let's just hope that the redeemer is still modular. Now for me personally, I have always liked the redeemer but never really truly loved it. It does have an interesting design with its twin lobster claw nacelles, but it's not a style that is to my taste. But ultimately, it was the first ship to ever have a coffee machine inside. So that might explain why I do like the redeemer. Uh, I personally see the Redeemer being a ship that will sit there looking pretty until it is needed and then called upon, do its job and then go back to sitting there looking pretty until it's required again. It is a tool to serve a specific purpose, which is fine. There is nothing wrong with that at all. And in fact, there are a lot of ships that are like this, specifically military ships and ships like the Redeemer have a pretty specific role that are not intended to be used as a daily driver. I do think the Aegis Redeemer is going to have a lot of use cases in the game as it gets further fleshed out and it does boast a lot of potential in many combat scenarios. And as I said earlier, I will certainly want to have at least one in the organization to help with hot insertions or extractions, providing cover for ground elements. And if it is capable of escorting and boarding as well, then I think many people are going to love this ship. And the fact that it was built by community members way back in the early days of Star Citizen's development and showcased through its development on the next great starship, it does provide a pretty cool story to tell others who come to the verse later on. Now, as mentioned before, the Aegis Redeemer is very close to being complete and I expect it'll come with the initial 315 release rather than a 315X patch. And I will certainly jump in and take a closer look at it when it does. But with that said, do let me know what your thoughts are about the Aegis Redeemer and whether it's a ship that you own, you want to own, or whatever varied interest you have in this ship. And if you do enjoy this ship series, be sure to subscribe for more and let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. If you want to talk more about Star Citizen or just hang out while we wait for 315 and CitizenCon, then be sure to join me over at twitch.tv forward slash Super Mac Brothers Ryan. You are all more than welcome. Tick that notification bell if you want to be notified when my videos go live. And again, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Cannot do this without you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.